following his excellency's unprecedented landslide victory in the november 24th presidential elections his excellency on the powers vested in him by the 1997 constitution has dissolved cabinet on the 2nd of february 2012. in the same vein his excellency embarked upon reconstitution of the cabinet cabinet will recall that his excellency the president Sir Professor Al Haji Dr. Yahya AJJ Jame, acting upon the powers vested in him under Section 71, Subsection 1, and 71, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, has appointed Dr. Isaacu Njai Sede as the Vice President of the Republic and Minister for Women's Affairs. As required by law, Mrs. Dr. Isaacu Njai Sede is supposed to take prescribed oaths of office, allegiance, and secrecy. May I now call upon Mrs. Dr. Ayaratunjai Sedi to come forward to take the prescribed oaths. Thank you. I, Ayaratunjai Sedi, do swear that I will execute the functions of the Office of the Vice President and Minister for Women's Affairs of the Republic of the Gambia without fear or favor, affection or ill will, according to the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia. So help me God. Out of secrecy, I, as Tunjai Sedi, having been appointed to the Office of Vice President and Minister for Women's Affairs of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will not, directly or indirectly, reveal such matters as may be committed to my secrecy. So help me God. I, Aisutunja Sedi, having been appointed to the Office of Vice President and Minister for Women's Affairs of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will be faithful and be a true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to the law. So help me God. I now call upon the newly sworn Vice President and Minister for Women's Affairs to come forward and sign the oath book. Thank you. It would be recalled that His Excellency the President, Sheikh Professor Al Haj Dr. Yahya AJJ Jame, acting upon the powers vested in him under Section 71, Subsection 1, and 71, Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia, has appointed Ms. Fatim Baji as Minister for Health and Social Welfare. As required by law, Mrs. Fatim Baji is to take the prescribed oaths of office, allegiance, and secrecy. May I now call upon Mrs. Fatim Baji to come forward and take the prescribed oaths. Thank you. Oath for the due execution of the Office of Minister of Health and Social Welfare. I, Fatim Baji, do swear that I will execute the functions of the Office of the Minister of Health and Social Welfare of the Republic of the Gambia without fear or favor, affection or ill will according to the Constitution and other laws of the Gambia. So help me God. Oath of Allegiance. I, Fatim Baji, having been appointed to the Office of the Minister of Health and Social Welfare of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Republic of the Gambia according to the law. So help me God. Oath of Secrecy I, Fatim Baji, having been appointed to the Office of Minister of Health and Social Welfare of the Republic of the Gambia, do swear that I will not directly or indirectly reveal such matters as may be committed to my secrecy. So help me God. May I now call upon the newly sworn Minister for 
social health, for health and social welfare to come forward and sign the oath book. Thank you, Your Excellency. As customary after the swearing in ceremony, um, the newly sworn ministers uh, invited to make a statement. May I now call upon uh, the Honorable Secretary General to make a statement before the uh, newly sworn ministers. Thank you. I begin by uh, thanking His Excellency, you know, the President once again for making the right choice, the right decision in reappointing High Excellency the Vice President of the Republic and also the Honorable Minister of Health and Social Welfare. Then I will congratulate and these newly sworn in ministers and the vice president, wishing them all the success that they need in their new task, new assignment. Our Excellency, the vice president, has been there from day one. We would say that she is the longest serving female vice president in the whole world. She has led cabinet. She has been a mother. She has been a leader to the entire cabinet. And we appreciate that leadership. We appreciate that care and we appreciate the position you had, you take in support of His Excellency the President and to the nation. You have been loyal, you have been dedicated to duty, and this is the reward that you get. It's been appreciated by His Excellency, and that's why he has renewed that confidence you know, in you. We hope that that will continue. And we pray for you for good health so that you will be able to work with us, work with His Excellency to uh, enable us meet you know, our objectives, our goals, and um, reach the vision 2020 um, that His Excellency has set for all of us. So we continue to count on you on your support, on your guidance, on your leadership. And we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you all the health and strength that you need to continue to serve this country. Honorable Fatim, we also wish you well. We know that you have served, you know, on two occasions, and you have been called to duty again. I know that you will redouble your efforts in making sure that as a team, as a cabinet, we continue um, that cooperation, that solidarity, that um, team spirit that you know was here. We will continue um, that with your, um, your, your, your support and also your contributions. To the rest of cabinet, we have the team now, and as we said earlier or before, we have no more time, you know, to waste. It is our time, this is our opportunity, this is our um, uh, moment. We all know what is supposed, you know, what is required of us. We have our leader who is there watching us. He has given us these assignments, and it's up to us now to live up to expectations. You all wrote back to him, conveying gratitude, appreciation for the confidence that he has reposed in you. So it's up to you. He has done what he's supposed to do. 
that is to select you among the millions of Gambians that are here. And he said, look, I'm giving you this task. You wrote back and you said you've accepted and you are ready to work. It's up to you to prove yourself then. And let's focus on you know, the real issue, and that is taking this country to another level with His Excellency's leadership and support and guidance. Let us not take anything for granted. And let us know that it's a family. Look how we are gathered here. And this is great. It's a family. And this is how it should be in our works and also the, um, the, the, the advice and support that we need from each other. Uh, let us see, let us not see anybody as a rival or as a competitor. Competitor, yes, in the fact that you want to deliver more than the order, and that is good for us. But we shouldn't be rivals, and we shouldn't, you know, set our eyes on anybody. If we are doing good, let's appreciate it. If we see somebody is, is needs some help, let's go to his or her aid and help. Because at the end of the day, it's the country. His Excellency has a lot of work to do, you know, other issues, and we need to help him. By helping him, he couldn't do it alone. That's why he appointed us. He appointed all of you. So we concentrate on our work. We set our targets, our goals, and you know, we, we work you know, towards that, towards achieving that. And at the end of the day, His Excellency would come back. He, by the time his mandate ends, said, this is what we have achieved, this is what we have done. And then he would feel proud of the team that he has. And then he would have the reason to hold on to that team the next time around. So I wish you know, all of us you know, well. And that unity thing, that teamwork, that love, that care that we need to move on. And let us do that. And let us, wherever we see in the society, somewhere that we can get in, involved, and then help and support to make things work, it's our responsibility also to do that. In the name of His Excellency, we all should strive for our legacy, what we leave behind. These positions are not permanent. Life itself is not permanent. But what is important is at the end of the day, you go back and reflect, and this is what I have contributed to my nation. This is what I have done, you know, for the, pre for the person who gave me this position. And you go back home and you relax and you know that you have done something for your country. At the end of the day, that is the legacy that one should be proud of. And we, this is our time to work on that, to make sure that you know, we have contributed our quota to national development in support of His Excellency. I wish you all um, success in you know, these daunting tasks that um, you know, is on our heads, on our soldiers. And I hope you know, Allah, inshallah, will, 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 will grant us you know, the, the, the necessary support that we need. I thank you very much, Your Excellency, and I once again congratulate you know um, all of you, and especially you know, Excellency the Vice President and Madam Baji Fatim for um, this uh, opportunity, this unique opportunity. Salam alaikum wa May I now call upon Her Excellency the Vice President to speak on behalf of the newly sworn cabinet members. Thank you. I wish to take this opportunity on behalf of my newly sworn in colleague. Honorable Fatim Baji, other colleagues who have been sworn in earlier on, as well as my humble self, to take this opportunity once again to thank His Excellency the President, Sheikh Professor Al Haji Dr. A.J.J. Jami, for the confidence reposed in us. Your Excellency, Gambians always believe that you choose for a reason. And you've chosen all of us as ministers here for a reason. You went through it, you thought about it, and you decided that as per our cumulative experience, as per our expertise, this is where we can serve better the nation. Not only cabinet, you've done that in, any other, in other areas as well. All three arms of government, wherever you've given the opportunity to choose, you choose rightly as befits your vision and your mission and your mandate for this country. 
That's my belief. I believe that my colleagues really have been chosen based on that. And we want to thank you for that confidence you repose in us, as I said earlier on. And I can assure you it's a challenge. Any, prom any, any, any appointment is a challenge. Because you're now being challenged that you can fulfill that position, the authority given to you by His Excellency the President, that indeed you can meet the expectations of Gambian people. Because again, whatever he does, is he's expecting that you'll serve the Gambian people better. Because he has his mandate from there. That's where he draws his mandate from. It's from the Gambian people. So if His Excellency is give, given a new mandate, that means all of us should link to that mandate. None of us here are elected by the people, but indirectly through His Excellency the President. Therefore, his vision would be our vision. His mission would be our mission. His objectives are, is what we should realize collectively, he being the leader. And that's what has been happening in cabinet. Since 1994, it's because of that collectivity, that unity of purpose, standing behind a leadership that has purpose, that has vision, that has a good mission for this nation. That is why we, we've realized so much within so short a period. It's His Excellency the President, he still feels that indeed we, have, we need to do more. His expectations are usually high because indeed the government people's expectations are high. That's the way things are. And I just want to ask His Excellency the President on behalf of all colleagues that indeed we'll give our best. We'll do our best to the best of our ability. Your Excellency, we know the expectations I think we realized those of us who were here today, even those who are not, had served elsewhere and they know. They were part of government too. And they know the expectations, your expectations, because it's linked to the expectations of the Gambian people. Yes, this, the, the, now we have this opportunity to interact, even at retreat levels, cabinet retreats. And as a result of that, we have come closer together as one family. We have realized that we must all move together. Because if you float together, it's better than allowing others to sink. Because whoever sings, we all sing. Because when I sing, I don't sing alone. I hold your hand or leg and we sing together. It doesn't help. So therefore, we float together and ensure that this ship of state reaches so, uh, safer souls. And I think that's what we are all here to do. In other words, we know the path. The always, president always says there's a flat fire. You know, he, 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 he knows a lot about pilot issues that I don't know aeronautical, but he said, it's like a flight plan. The pilot there has a plan, we all know. So his plan, we do know, Vision 2020 is the main development blueprint of this country. We know that PAGE is the medium term now from, 20, from this year, 2012 to 2015. And the plan is there, it's just waiting for implementation. He has made, the, he's, he's given his level best to make sure that the resources are in place. So now it's just delivery. And that is why the Secretary General, what he said is right. In delivery, we have to reinforce each other. I can never deliver alone on women's affairs, honestly, without the support of colleagues. Cross-cutting, we are all cross-cutting. Yes, I know my colleague talks about it, but I also talk about it. We are all cross-cutting, and we need the help of other colleagues. And I have no doubt in my mind, as the Secretary General said, we'll definitely support each other in this venture. Because we'll all win. We'll all be winners. If I succeed, you succeed, we are all winners. It's the name of the government. It's the name of cabinet, the nation, that would be put on the wall map. So I'm appealing for that continued support as a family. I think I cannot belabor the point much. But I also want to realize, as Minister of Women's Affairs, I must admit this that women have held positions of authority in this government since 1994, more than ever before. Look at cabinet, I don't have to tell you. Seven females here, that's from what I counted here. Out of a cabinet of 16, we are almost going to be 50, 50, 43, 57. So we must commend him for that. And that, you can see that resonating in all other levels of government. You go to the public services there. You go to decentralized government, it's there. So we must thank His Excellency the President for engendering the development process and definitely for mainstreaming gender where it can. But again, I want to clarify, it's not based on just numbers yeah. or just being female. Yeah. You, have to, you have to be worth being there. He looks at 
what you can deliver as a person, not just because you're a woman. And I also believe that. You, you want, it's not like giving a quota to women and just say, let's try by all means and feel it. No, he's just looking at, at an individual, whether you're male or female, and whether you can suit that position. But all I'm saying is, in terms of meeting the international quota of 33%, you have surpassed it. Again, you are giving back to the Gambian women. You've always said it. I know your, your, your opinion about Gambian women. And when I say Gambian, I'm speaking for the majority of women. Today, we are where we are because of the contribution of Gambian women, among other social groupings. I would not just say women. The youth have contributed. The farmers, have male and female, they've contributed. Everybody has contributed. But we are saying that because of the contribution of Gambian women at all levels, especially when I he say, I'm talking about women at the grassroots as well, be they farmers, be they women operating in the informal sector, they are contributing positively to the development process of this country because they have the leadership that is supporting them. They have the direction given by that leadership. And indeed, the political will is there, the enabling environment. Who, who believes in gender equality, equity, and the empowerment of women once they are willing to support the development process. And therefore, we should thank His Excellency the President. On behalf of all those women, but I can assure him also, on behalf of all those women, that they will never, they've said it themselves, they are the ones who spoke, not us at this level. They said they will never definitely disappoint you. There is assured. This is what the women keep on telling me, up to yesterday, that was the last I heard about. That they'll be behind you all the way. And so are uh, other social groupings, I'm sure. Council of Elders have said the same thing to me. Men have said the same thing to me. In other words, different social groupings have said the same thing to me. Because they believe that they have a leadership that is delivering, a leadership worth supporting. Because whatever you advise us to do is in our own interest. Because, for example, look at, go back to the land, feed yourself, grow what you eat and eat what you grow. Who, grow, who eats it? All of it, it's us. It goes back to us, not the president's pocket. But he doesn't stop there. He implements. He doesn't only say, this is, is what should be done. I'll give you an example of gender. If he says that I believe in women, he's done it. Practically, we've seen it. Now, if he says, eat what you grow, he's grown. And <laughs> I mean, he's, he's a cultivator. He's a farmer. And we've seen the examples. You look at any sector. I can raise my hand that any of our sectors here, the president is leading. Hmm? I don't have to belabor the point. Whether it's in the area of, for example, my he, colleague here is in trade. When you look at trade, he's the main promoter of the Gambia in that area. Tourism, environment, he's won a lot of accolades and awards. Uh, education, today. He's won a lot of accolades internationally. The list goes on. I don't want to name someone, leave other, but I can tell each of our sectors here, we are commended because of the efforts of the president and his leadership, his support. So, Your Excellency, we want to thank you for that and thank the Gambian people for renewing your mandate. And again, we are not surprised. Not many presidents uh, have four, year, <laughs> four mandates. Usually by the second time, you become unpopular. So, and yet, your popularity rating is going up, not down. 72%, that is high, and we should commend <laughs> Your Excellency for that. And we are hoping and praying, because here we are all APRC, hoping and praying that come the National Assembly elections, which are around the corner, it would resonate, the same thing. 48 Inshallah. zero, 48 constituencies, we hope to win that. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> let's just work hard towards it. Yes, there is a lot of work we have to do in that regard. And Your Excellency, I'm sure the work has started. So once again, we thank you for the opportunity given to us. And like I said earlier on, we would do our level best, to the best of our abilities, not to disappoint us in any way. Possible. We are human, to us is human. So wherever we are, please, we are begging to, to be forgiven, because it may not be intentional. But we'll try, by all means, fallible as we are, we'll try our best to, to deliver according to your expectations. We know the expectations of the Gambian people. We know how much more has to be done before we reach 2020 and beyond. And we know what is expected in page. It's very clear to us because you've told us, you've led us, you've explained. And I can assure you, we'll deliver to the best of our abilities and we will not disappoint you. Once again, thank you very much and may God bless I now have the singular honor and pleasure to call upon His Excellency the President to make a statement. Thank you. Your Excellency, the Vice President, Honorable Secretary General, Honorable Ministers, Secretary of Cabinet, members of the press, security protocol, and all other 
protocols respectfully observed. And fellow Gambians, first of all, I want to congratulate Your Excellency and uh, the other newly sworn in minister. But overall, I want to congratulate all of you for taking up the challenge, which is a very difficult and daunting one, a challenge that would test you to the limits in terms of endurance, but more importantly also in terms of honesty and patriotism. I always pray that to have a cabinet that will be consistent, that will be stable, and with which we can march towards the promised land. Man proposes, Allah disposes. I've never had any wish to appoint anyone that I know I would end up dismissing. Because I'll be wasting our time. I'll be slowing down our progress. And so any one of you appointed here, do not go with the impression that, oh, I'm just there for a time. Because if you have that in mind, that you are here for a time, you will not give it your best, and eventually you'll go out. There's no doubt about it. But if you are here to stay, you will give it your best. The bottom line is half fit. Am I perfect? No, I'm not. And I will never claim to be perfect. Is the vice president perfect? No. But she is the longest serving vice president in the whole world. Not in fact, not female vice president, but she is the longest serving vice president in the whole world. Put gender aside. You can find out. She is the longest serving vice president in the whole world. Why? Because if you split her heart open, you will see Gambia. Gambian people. She doesn't make mistakes. No, she makes mistakes. The same like all of us do mistakes. But she is one who is always dedicated to her duty. In the course of executing our duties, we are bound to make mistakes. You will only fall in trouble for making a mistake if the mistake is deliberate or it's not remedied. As I said before, I don't just wake up one morning and I say, oh, look, let me look at one Manjago to fire today. What am I going to gain from that? And I always take into consideration, you as an individual, no. You have a family. And in the whole country, this, this is a very small country, we are all related. And I would hate to see your children drop out of school because you've been kicked out of government. But I have no choice too. In my task to defend the Constitution, there are pleasant tasks I have to do that is develop the country and be happy with it and appoint people. But there are also unpleasant tasks that I have to carry out in observance of my oath to defend the Constitution. That is, get rid of those who are not ready to work. So please don't give me the cause. As I said, if you, are, if you find that you cannot your heart is not really here, really just resign. If your intention is to come and say, oh, let me work within the system to destroy it, you're making a grave mistake. A good intention can never be defeated by an evil intention. My appointing you has no evil intention in it. It's a noble intention. So if you want to reward me, or reward this country with an evil intention, you are doomed. You have only yourself to blame. Let us also remember that uh, 
One thing that is also unacceptable. You walk when the ajama is around or vice is around. When he is not around, you don't care. Work also does not only mean what you do as a minister or a secretary general or a permanent secretary or secretary to cabinet. You have to also ensure that you are a leader. In your various respective ministries, you are leaders. And you have to set an example that the rest of the people you are leading to follow. You go to ministry, you find uh, people eating when it is not time for lunch. You find people coming to work at 10 o'clock and by quarter to three, they've started parking. By 3.30, they are gone. How are we going to develop a, a country with this type of attitude? And three quarters of the time that you are in office, you are either sending SMS messages or all sorts of things. You, you are on, on the internet. This is unacceptable. Also, the resources that are put at your play, at, at your disposal in order for you to function. If there is no control, as a minister, you don't even know how many vehicles you have. Which vehicles are in good running order and you don't even know their maintenance schedule. You don't even know how much fuel is being consumed by your ministry. This is unacceptable. It, as I said earlier on, before this day, it will not be business as usual. Where somebody decides to appoint himself or herself responsible for the vehicles and does whatever he or she likes, is unacceptable. We have to control. We don't have the resources to waste. In fact, even the Almighty Allah doesn't like waste. Much more a poor country like the Gambia. We have been very wasteful. Or too lenient for that matter. You send a driver to just to go to, the, uh, from Quadrango to go to the market to buy something. The driver ends up in Brikama carrying firewood. Indiscipline will not be tolerated in this government. So, before you come begging, if I fire anybody because of indiscipline from any ministry, and you, the Minister of Permanent Secretary, comes to beg for it, you're going home too. Because you should have, you should come and tell me, thank you very much, you should have told me to do it. But be careful. If it reaches the President's office, they will dismiss you. And you know that the person is not doing good. Are you not condoning it? Sometimes, in my office here, even I as the president, I make sure that no fire stays with me for more than 12 hours. That is why I have no working hours, I have no closing hours. And I don't even have sense of weekend. Because I don't want, I don't want anything to be delayed. But some ministries, not all of you, important issues will be hanging there until the last minute. And sometimes we miss the deadline for important international uh, obligations. This is unacceptable. I'm making it very clear to you. These five years, it, is, it will be a crime for you to be written twice on an issue that you should have, that is that you should have treated along, uh, without being told to do so because it is your responsibility. Here, whether I'm around or not, they know. If something delays, they have to explain in writing who is responsible and why. Because it's important. And I make sure that let me, in the minute, I'll tell you, let me not, when you reply in writing, I respond by saying, if there's a repetition, here's who wrote. We can give you files, and uh, those who are familiar with this office, they will tell you that. Because you know, this is why I will spend the whole night working on the files. I will not go to sleep until I finish, I finish the files. My daughter calls it homework. She looks at me and says, Daddy, you know what? I don't want to be a president anywhere in the world because there's too much homework. <laughs> this is it. You have to lead by example. Everything is leadership by example. The way you comport yourself in your ministries, that is the way your staff is going to behave. So, 
uh, it has been a long day. I wish you all the best. Let me make it very clear. And I will swear to the Quran. I didn't hire you with the intention to fire you. Billahi wallahi ta'ala. And I wish that all of us would see through the achievements we're going to make in this five-year mandate. I wish you all the best. <laughs>